Section 11 Priority Dates of Claims of a Complete Specification Section 11 introduces the concept of priority. Priority is the concept that decides when a patent application was filed with regard to determining novelty. Novelty as we have discussed before is the fact that an invention has to be new and novelty is connected to the concept of anticipation. An invention is regarded as new if it is not anticipated by the prior art. In order to determine anticipation or in order to determine whether an invention is new, we look at the priority date of the invention. So the priority date is a concept that is tied to the disclosure of the invention when the invention is disclosed and based on the priority date, we are able to determine whether an invention is new. So, if there is a disclosure before the date of the priority, that disclosure can affect the novelty of the invention. So, the priority date refers to that point in time from which the invention will be regarded as new. As a concept, priority date is tied to the claim of a complete specification. There may be disclosures made in a provisional specification, there may be disclosures made in the descriptive part of a complete specification, but priority is only tied to the claim. So, 11.1 begins by a statement that there shall be a priority date for each claim of a complete specification. So, each claim regardless of the number of claims that are there should have an independent priority. Now, why is that so? Because we have seen that there could be instances where claims are carved out of various disclosures that are made by different provisional specifications. We have seen instances where provisional specifications could be filed one after the other and you could follow all the provisional specification with one complete specification provided that complete specification is filed within 12 months from the first provisional specification. This tells us that if there are multiple disclosures of aspects of the same invention made pursuant to filing different provisional specifications, it is possible to capture all the disclosures together through the filing of one complete specification. Needless to say, that complete specification will have multiple claims which were disclosed at different points in time. Now, understand this as a case where all the disclosures that were made in the provisional specification was captured in the complete specification, but in different claims. So, if the disclosures were made on a monthly basis and we had referred to this hypothetical instance of provisionals being filed on the first of every month. So, you had a provisional filed on Jan 1st of a particular year disclosing an aspect of the invention, then you had another provisional filed on a related aspect on Feb 1st then on March 1st and April 1st, you had four disclosures. So, when you follow this with a complete specification say in May and assume that the complete specification does not add anything, but just compiles all the disclosures made in the earlier four provisional specifications, you are likely to have a minimum of four claims. Assuming again that there were four different disclosures made which were related to each other. So, you could have a minimum of four claims. These four claims will have a priority date that goes back to the first disclosure. So, assume that the claim 1 relates to the disclosure made in January 1st, made in the provisional specification filed on January 1st, then that claim, claim number 1 will have a priority date that starts from Jan 1st. Claim number 2 covers a disclosure made by the provisional specification filed on February 1st then claim 2's priority date will begin from February 1st and so on. So, we understand from this that claims in a complete specification can have different priorities or they could also have same priority. For instance, you file a complete specification. There is no history of a provisional specification. What you file for the first time is the complete and at that point, all the claims are going to have the same priority because the claims have been disclosed for the first time. So, it is possible for 
claims to have the same priority, all the claims to have the same priority, but as a rule, 11.1 tells us that each claim will have a priority date. Now, the priority date is significant as we mentioned to determine novelty of an invention. So, anything, any disclosure before the priority date pertaining to the invention can affect the novelty. We can say that there could be a case for anticipation of what is disclosed before and any disclosure that is made about the same invention after that priority date can be a matter of potential infringement. So, if the disclosure went before your priority date, it could affect the novelty of your invention. If the disclosure happens after your priority date, you could have a case of infringement against that disclosure or against that person who makes that disclosure of obviously after the grant of the patent. 11.2 gives you instances where claims in a complete specification can have different priorities. Now, 11.2 the corresponding or the relevant provision is a case which we saw in section 9.3. Section 9.3 you will recall is a case where a specification was filed purporting to be a complete specification and uh, that could be downgraded as a provisional. We saw an instance where a disclosure could be made in a document that is purported to be a complete and the applicant to, could request uh, at any time within 12 months from the date of filing the application to downgrade or to treat the complete as a provisional and then to proceed accordingly. So, whenever disclosures are made at different points in time and based on those disclosure claims are filed, the claims are likely to have different priorities. 11.2 tells us that where a complete specification is filed pursuant to a single application accompanied by a complete uh, accompanied by a provisional specification or a specification which is treated by virtue of a direction under subsection 3 of 9 that is the purported complete as a provisional and a claim is fairly based on the matter disclosed in the specification referred to in clause A or B the priority date of that claim shall be the date of filing the relevant specification. Now, we had already mentioned fair basis or the phrase fairly based pertains to the fact that a disclosure that is made has to be followed by a claim and if the claim is fairly based on an earlier disclosure, the claim takes that earlier priority. 11.2 gives two instances. One an instance where a provisional specification is filed and we saw from the language of form 2 a provisional specification need not have a claim. So, a provisional specification only has a broad disclosure and it need not have a claim. So, 11.2 tells us two instances. The first instance where a provisional is filed and a claim is fairly based on the matter disclosed in that provisional specification is filed at a later point in time by way of a complete then the priority date of that claim shall be the date of filing the relevant specification and by relevant specification they are referring to the provisional. So, if there is a provisional file with a disclosure after say 6 months you file a complete with a claim and the claim is actually carved out of that disclosure which you made in the provisional specification then the priority date of the claim will be the date of the disclosure made in the provisional. So, keep this in mind, fair basis is all about mapping a disclosure to a claim. So, there is a disclosure made of the inventive concept or the invention and you file a claim at a later point in time. Now, this mapping would normally happen when there is a provisional followed by the complete route. As I mentioned some time back, you could directly file a complete. In that case, this mapping need not be there because the complete has claims in it and the complete the claims are supported by the description. So, the description and the claims were disclosed at the same point in time they both have the priority is the same because the disclosure and the claim happened at the same point. 11.2 talks about when the disclosure and the claims happen are filed or at different points. Provisional specification has the disclosure which when it is followed by a claim at a later point in time, 
the claim will have the priority from the disclosure. The word you will find that in 11.2, they do not use the word disclosure, rather they use the word matter disclosed. It pertains to the same. So, when the disclosure is made for the first time and is followed up by a claim at a later point in time in a complete specification, the complete specification can take the priority of the disclosure. And what is the yardstick for this? The yardstick is that the claim should be fairly based on the matter disclosed. It should be fairly based on the disclosure made in the specification. Now, the second condition in 11.2 the first condition was where a provisional follows a complete. The second condition or second type of claiming priority from a matter disclosed pertains to what we call specification treated as a purported complete. I mean it was filed, it was purported to be a complete specification, but for whatever reason the applicant felt that it is not complete and the applicant wanted to downgrade it or to convert the the purported complete into a provisional. Now, in that case again you are going to have disclosures different from claims. Understand the purported complete having something in it, a disclosure. Now, when you convert that into a provisional, you get more time to file a complete. Obviously, you should have more time because the time will accrue, 9.3 tells us that the time will accrue from the date of filing the first specification which is the purported specification. So, you will definitely have more time to file a complete because now you have regarded the complete that you filed as a provisional. So, when you follow it up with another filing, there will be a case where there have been disclosures made earlier and claims filed later. So, when this happens, the concept of fair basis can step in. Now, you can see whether those claims that were filed later could be mapped or fairly based or can be derived from the earlier disclosure. Again, in this case, we could regard the claims as having priority from the date on which the earlier matter was disclosed. Now, section 11.2 talks about two instances. Both instances pertain to a provisional followed by a complete. And in both the instances, if the claim in the complete can be mapped or can be fairly based on the matter disclosed earlier, it takes the priority. So, priority as I said is tied to the claim, priority as a concept is tied to claim, every claim needs to have a priority and the priority can shift based on the disclosure made, based on the matter disclosed. If the matter was disclosed earlier to the filing of the claims, then they get the priority from that earlier date. 11.3 gives yet another instance where a complete specification is filed or proceeded in pursuance of two or more applications accompanied by the specifications as I mentioned in subsection 2 and the claim is fairly based on the matter disclosed. Now, the corresponding relevant provision is a similar instance is mentioned in section 9.2. Section 9.2 you will recollect talks about two or more applications of a uh, file which are followed up by one complete. You could file multiple provisionals and followed up by a complete. Now, this talks about a similar case where a complete is filed pursuant to many one, two or more provisionals. Now, it, it further states that in one of those applications, the priority date of the claim shall be the date of filing the application accompanied by that specification partly in one and partly in the other, the priority date of the claim shall be the date of filing the application accompanied by the specification in the latter date. Now, this again is tied to the disclosure. Now, A tells us that in one of those specification, the priority date of the claim shall be the date of filing the application accompanied by that specification, which simply means that if the disclosure is complete the date on which the disclosure was completely done, you get the priority date from that. So, you file a claim in your complete specification and the claim can be mapped to a complete disclosure. Complete disclosure as in whatever is claimed in that particular claim has been completely disclosed in one point in time earlier, regardless of whether it came in the first 
provisional or the second or the third, it was completely disclosed. So, A tells us if the disclosure is made in one of those specification, the priority date of the claim shall be the date of filing the application accompanied by that specification. So, it relates to a earlier date and what is the catch here? The catch here is the disclosure should have been complete. It should completely cover what is now being claimed. B is the other side of the coin. B says if the disclosure is in partly in one and partly in the other. So, what does this partly mean? The inventive concept or the invention as it is being claimed in one particular claim, the disclosure happened in two parts. Okay. What is now being claimed in one claim, the disclosure happened in two parts. It came in a provisional specification, say a provisional specification filed in January 1st, it came first and partly uh, another part of the in invention came in a disclosure made in a provisional specification filed on February 1st. Now, together these two disclosures made one claim. So, in that case, if the disclosure is made partly in one and partly in another, the priority date shall be the date of filing the application accompanied by the specification of the latter date. It simply means when the disclosure was completed, that will be your priority date. So, it is again tied to the concept which we saw in the first case. A disclosure, you can claim the priority from a disclosure if the disclosure is complete. If the disclosure is done in parts, then we take the latter date because the latter date is when the disclosure became complete. So, again it is the same concept that is covered in A and B. A talks about an instance where the disclosure is made in one go. B talks about an instance where a disclosure is made in part. First, there is a disclosure and followed by another disclosure at a later point in time. And in, the, in both the cases, we see whether the disclosure was complete. If the matter disclosed was got completed at the second instance, then the priority date will become will be the date on which the disclosure got completed. Now, it is just not a case of partly in one and partly the other. Say there are 10 disclosures and all the 10 disclosures are now captured in one claim. So, which essentially means parts of the invention was disclosed in 10 bits and you followed it up with one single claim. Now, the priority date of that claim will be when the disclosure got completed, which was the 10th disclosure. So, the priority date will start from the 10th disclosure because that is the point at which the disclosure was completed. So, 3, 11, 3 tells us that disclosure you can has to be complete and complete in the sense that what is being claimed should be fully in that disclosure. If it is not fully in that disclosure, if it is in two different disclosures or three or more different disclosures, then we see when the disclosures put together completed the invention that is now being claimed. So, if it happened at the third uh, disclosure, if the invention as it is claimed was complete, then we regard the third disclosure as a starting point of the priority. In 11.3a, the fact that the disclosure when it is complete, now in 11.3 you had two instances where the first case was the disclosure was complete, so you get the priority from there and the second instance where the disclosure was not complete, it was in parts. When it is in parts, we see when it got completed. Now the same concept is repeated in 3a where a complete specification based on a previously filed application in India has been filed within 12 months from the date of application, which is the normal case for any complete specification. It has to be filed within 12 months from the previous application, which is in most cases, it is a provisional. It, there could be a case where it, there was a perpetrated complete which got downgraded to a provisional, but we understand in a normal case, 12 months from the date of filing a provisional and 3A continues. And the claim is fairly based on the matter disclosed in a previously filed application. Let us assume that previously filed application to be a provisional. The priority date of that claim shall be the date of the previously filed application, the provisional, in which the matter was first disclosed. The matter was first disclosed, we always understand it as first completely disclosed. The word complete is not there, but we understand that the disclosures have to be complete. 
and when we mention complete, we are referring to the fact that what is covered in a claim, all the aspects covered in a claim should be disclosed at either in one go or in parts. So, if the disclosure is in different parts as we saw in 11.3, then whenever the disclosure got completed, then that is the point at which the priority starts. 3A talks about a disclosure where it is assumed that it is a complete one. So, if the disclosure is complete, then we go to the first disclosure because it should be understood as the first complete disclosure. So, whenever the disclosure is complete, whenever the disclosure is or a claim is based on a dis matter that is disclosed in one go, then we regard the first point of disclosure. The understanding is that in the first disclosure, the entire invention that was claimed was fully disclosed. So, we go by the, so as a rule, disclosure we go to the earliest point, that is the rule. In any case, if you want to uh, or fair basis, if the invention that is disclosed in a claim, we look at the earliest disclosure to get the priority. The only case where we do not look at the earliest disclosure is if the disclosure is not complete. If the disclosure is in parts, it is in over a period of time, then we look at the point at which the disclosure got completed with regard to the matter claimed. 11.4 introduces section 16, which you will know pertains to divisional applications and we, we have still not, we have made a passing reference to uh, divisional application. Divisional applications are filed when uh, it could be filed voluntarily by the applicant or it could be also be filed based on a direction by the controller. Divisional applications are filed when there are more than one invention claimed in a specification. The law states that there can be only one application for an invention. If there are more than one invention, there have to be more than one applications. 11.4 talks about an instance where there is a divisional application, where a complete specification has been filed in pursuance of a further application made by virtue of subsection 1 of 16 and a claim is fairly based on the matter disclosed in any of the earlier specifications, provisional or complete as the case may be, the priority date of the claim shall be the date of filing the specification in which the matter was first disclosed. It is the same principle. When an invention is fairly based on a disclosure that is made, then the priority date will accrue from the date on which the disclosure was first made when the matter was first disclosed. The principle remains the same. The claim will always look at the point of first disclosure. The only exception is if the first disclosure is not complete, then we look at the point at which the disclosure got completed. Now, this still goes by the same principle that the claim will always get the priority of the first disclosure, but in this case, the application involves a divisional. It is only, it is just that it is not the usual case of a provisional followed by a complete. It is a case of a complete followed by a complete or a provisional followed by a complete and another complete because divisional is always done on a complete. You cannot do a divisional on a provisional for the simple fact that there are no claims in a provisional for you to determine whether there are more than one inventions in an application. The key to determine whether you have covered more than one invention in an application, whether you have violated the rule of unity of invention is to look into the claims. So, if there are no claims for you to scrutinize, then it will be very hard for you to make a case that the application actually covered more than one invention. So, divisional always comes in where a complete is filed and either the applicant feels that there are more than one inventions or the patent office feels so, the application can now be divided. When we mention the application, we are referring to a complete specification, can now be divided into a further application, which is also a complete. Because whenever we talk about divisionals, we are talking about dividing a set of claims into two applications. So, the set of claims which were covered in one application since it was felt they cover more than one invention, 
they have to now become the part of another application. So, inevitably you are going to look at instances in a divisional where a complete specification got divided into an other complete specification. When we say divisional, it is not the same application being divided into two. The main application now has a child. So, we use the word parent and child, mother and child. So, the first application filed application is regarded as the parent and the later filed application is regarded as the child the, or the divisional. So, the principle remains the same in 11.4. Claim gets the priority from the earliest disclosure, what we call the first disclosure. In this case, the first disclosure can be either in a provisional or in a complete. So, the only difference here is in the earlier case, we saw a provisional being followed by a complete. In this, it could be a complete that follows a complete. The principle remains the same. And again, priority or the rules of priority are relevant only when claims and the disclosures are filed in different points in time. So, whenever you file a divisional, you are going to claim or remove certain claims and put it in a different application on a different date. So, your divisional is not going to have, because you file the divisional later in time, it is not going to have the same date of filing as of the mother application or the parent application. So, because there is a difference in some set of claims which you have filed at a later point in time and a disclosure that was made at a different point in time, you need to look at priority. As I said, priority as a concept becomes relevant when the disclosure and the claim are made in at different points in time. And divisional is a classic case where the claims will have different filing dates. It is a classic case because you had filed the application, the patent office feels or you as an applicant feel that there are more than one inventions and you file a divisional application removing some claims from the earlier application and making it into an independent application. So, there is a difference or the, the latter filed application or the divisional is filed at a different point in time. So, whenever there is a difference in the time of filing the disclosure and the claim, the rules of priorities will set in. 11.5 is a blanket provision which covers instances, the foregoing provisions of this section which is 1, 2, 3, 3a and 4. Any claim of a complete specification would for the provisions of this subsection have two or more priority dates. The priority date of that claim shall be the earlier or earliest of those dates. Now, it is possible for a claim to have multiple priorities. Multiple priorities in the sense that there was a disclosure made and there was a claim filed. There was another disclosure made and again a claim filed and you feel that there are some claims now. now. Now, if there are multiple disclosures made and multiple claims filed based on them, it is possible that claims can be mapped not only to the two different disclosures. The same part of a invention that is covered in a claim could now be mapped to different disclosures. The disclosure you made on January 1st had some parts of the invention in it. The one which you made on February 1st again had some parts of the invention. Now, you are able to look, when you look at the priority of a claim, you see that the claim is also covered in the February disclosure and the claim is also covered by the disclosures you made in January. So, in that case, you will look at the earliest point of the disclosure and claim the priority from the earliest date. This is in tune with what we saw in section 11.4 that the matter that was first disclosed. So, you always go to the first disclosure. Again, the catch is the first disclosure has to be complete. So, in January, when you made a disclosure, if it was complete and in February, you made the disclosure and again, the disclosure got repeated here. If you make a claim, then you are entitled to claim the earliest priority, which is you will obviously claim the disclosure that you made in January. So, 5 says that where a claim has two or more priority dates and how does a claim have two or more priority dates? By the sheer fact that there is a, it can be mapped to different disclosures. You have a choice and especially in a case where you file 
10 provisional specifications and follow it up with one complete, there could be instance that you disclosed an aspect of the invention multiple times because you had to for the sake of completion you had to repeat what you had filed in an earlier occasion. So, they could be overlapping disclosures and if a claim can get the benefit of multiple disclosures, Levin Phi tells us that the applicant can claim the earliest disclosure which was complete in, in its sense as the priority date. Uh, 11 6 is again another blanket provision and the relevant provision is section 137 which deals with international applications. In any case to which subsections 2, 3, 3 a, 4 and 5 do not apply and you should understand that in any case where there is a difference in the timeline of the disclosure and the filing of the claim which is what it means, the priority date of the claim shall subject to provisions of section 137 which is applies to an international application be the date of filing of the complete specification. This is a very simple statement which says that if you have not made a disclosure and at one point and followed it up with a claim at another point in time, then in all other cases it is assumed that a disclosure and the claim are filed at the same point which is what you would do if you file a complete specification. Now, for a moment remove this entire idea about a provisional specification followed by a complete from your mind and assume that you are filing a complete for the first time and the complete has everything in it. The disclosure is perfect, every aspect of the invention is completely flushed out and all the claims are there in your complete. When you file the complete, there is no need for you to do the mapping because the disclosure which is there in the descriptive part and the claims were filed on the same date. So, this is a case where the disclosure from which and we saw that all claims have to be fairly based on the disclosure that is a requirement in section 10. When the disclosure discloses all the aspects that are claimed and both the disclosure and the claims are filed together which will be a case when you file a complete specification, then the complete specification will have the date of priority on the date of filing. The principle is so simple because there was no earlier disclosure. So, in cases where there is no earlier disclosure by which we mean there is no earlier provisional or earlier parent application followed by divisional in all these cases there is no earlier disclosure whatsoever. The first thing you file is the complete specification and the complete specification is fully discloses the matter. Then in that case the priority date will be the date of filing the complete specification. So, 11.6 tells us that in 2, 3, 3 a, 4 and 5 we had instances where a disclosure preceded the filing of the claim. In all those instances you have to do the mapping, fair basis will be to an external document. In 6 removing these exceptions if there is only a complete specification filed then fair basis will be to what is disclosed in the same document. So, I hope you are able to get this as long as the disclosure and the claims are in a single document then the priority will be the date of filing because it happened on the same day. If the disclosure is on a different document on a different date say a provisional followed up by a complete then you will have to do this exercise of mapping it back to the disclosure whether the disclosure was the first disclosure, whether the disclosure was complete in all its sense, if it was in parts then when did the parts get completed, you will have to look at all the rules that we saw in sections uh, subsections 1 to 5. 11 7 talks about two concepts which are important from the perspective of understanding priority. 11 7 talks about both post dating which we have already seen in section 9 and it also talks about anti dating which I had briefly mentioned in the context of divisional applications. Now, post dating is giving up a priority date and shifting the priority date to a latter date let us put it that way I am I am trying to explain this from the perspective of priority dates. If you post date an application say you file a 
provisional on January 1st and you file a complete based on that provisional on June 1st and for whatever reason you want to cancel the provisional, you do not want the provisional to be there, you want to withdraw the provisional. So, you indicate to the controller that please cancel my provisional and the consequence of cancelling the provisional is that the disclosure you made in the provisional is no longer can be used for determining priority. So, the controller will be forced to post date your application which means giving up the priority date on the provisional because now there is no provisional and post date it to the date of filing the complete. So, the date of priority now shifts from January 1st to June 1st. So, this is post dating, you give up an earlier priority and shift it to a latter date because you have removed the underlying reason for demanding that priority. What was the underlying reason here? There was a provisional which you want to withdraw. 17, when we come to 17, I will explain that is again post dating in the context in another context. So, post dating we have already covered section 9, post dating is giving up an earlier date and moving it to a latter date because of an underlying reason. 9 talks about the underlying reason as withdrawing the provisional. So, when there is no provisional, you cannot claim, uh, when you have withdrawn the provisional, you cannot claim anything based on that disclosure because then it does not become a part of the official record and it becomes very hard for a court or the intellectual property appellate board to look at this because the underlying document was not there. So, the patent office will not give you the priority if the underlying priority document in this case a provisional is removed. Anti-dating is the reverse of it. You file application on June 1st and because you have already filed something on Jan 1st, January 1st, you could claim the priority of January 1st because the claim in the application filed in June 1st actually is based on a disclosure that went in January 1st. Now, understand on January 1st you file a complete specification which is complete in all aspects. The only issue with that complete specification is that you disclosed more than one invention. You realize that in June and on June 1st you file a divisional which is what section 16 is all about. When you file the divisional, you are going to remove certain claims from the application filed on January 1st and put it in your June 1st application. Now, the June 1st application though it has got claims and it is filed on a different date, the disclosure can relate back to what you made in your January 1st application, what we call the parent or the mother application. So, the June 1st application becomes a child which day gets its priority from the matter that was disclosed because it is just a, an exercise of removing the claims. It gets its priority based on the disclosure and the disclosure was made the 1st of January. In this case, a later filed application gets the priority of an earlier filed application. So, the later filed application for the purposes of priority is anti-dated. So, this is the opposite of post-dating. So, post-dating happens in the concept of giving up a provisional, anti-dating happens in instances where a divisional is filed and the divisional claims its priority from the parent. Section 11.7 tells us that in cases where there is post-dating or anti-dating, the reference to the date of filing the application shall be the date as so post dated or anti dated. So, date of filing we saw in 11.6 pertains to the priority date where there is no difference in the date of disclosure of the matter disclosed and the date of filing the claim. In other words, date of filing is relevant where you file a complete specification. If the date of filing is changed because of post dating or anti dating, 11.7 tells us that the date of filing will then be the date so post dated or anti dated. So, in the first instance in section 9, if you gave up your priority because you had to withdraw a provisional specification, then the date of priority also gets shifted to the later date. In section 16, 
if you file a divisional and if you are able to claim priority from the parent, then the date of filing is shifted to the date of filing the parent, which means the date of filing as a default case, the date of filing is the priority date. So, the date of priority is antedated or the date of priority in section 9, it gets post dated. So, 11.8 talks of the instances where a disclosure made will not affect the validity of a patent. Now, for a patent to be valid, it has to satisfy the basic requirements of novelty, inventive step and utility or uh, the fact that the invention is capable of industrial application. Now, these three concepts, if it is not there or if it is not proved to be there, can be reasons for invalidating a patent. Priority is tied to the concept of novelty. So, if the priority is wrongly claimed, if the date on which the priority was actually claimed there have been certain disclosures, then the patent can be invalidated for lack of novelty. So, invalidity is understood as the absence of the requirements of patentability. That is one way to understand it because invalidity can also come because of certain grounds other than the grounds for patentability. It could also come because of certain other grounds like fraud could be a ground for invalidating a patent under section 64. But in this context, for the sake of priority, we understand invalidity as a concept that can raise a challenge on a patent if the priority is not claimed in the right way or if there is a disclosure before the priority date. Now, 11.8a tells us that a claim in a complete specification of a patent shall not be invalid by reason only of publication or use of the invention so far it is claimed in that claim on or after the priority date of that claim. Now, we have been telling you that anything that happens after the priority date, any disclosure that happens after the priority date cannot affect your invention. It cannot be a reason for determining invalidity. It cannot be a reason for challenging the novelty of the application. Now, this is the reason why many inventors file a provisional and later on go for conferences or go for discussions and disclose the invention to others. Because the day you file your provisional, you can claim priority from that date. So, say assume that you file a provisional on June 1st and on June 7th, you make a disclosure of the invention to an audience. Now, because you had preserved the priority before you made the public disclosure, under 11.8a, your disclosure which you made on June 7th cannot be a reason for invalidating your patent. It only it clearly says that any disclosure in, in 11.8a, it says any publication or use on or after the priority date shall not be a reason for invalidating the patent. So, any disclosure you make after the priority date does not affect your novelty and it cannot be a reason, it cannot be anticipation because it happens after the date. So, anticipation is something hap which happens before the date of your disclosure. 11.8b says the another instance, the grant of another patent which claims the invention so far as claimed in the first mentioned claim in a claim of the same or a latter priority date. Now, assume that you have preserved your priority on June 1st, 2017. Now, if another patent gets granted after you preserve the priority, that cannot be a ground for invalidating your pat patent so far as your claim had a priority that was earlier to it or on the same day. So, the latter patent, see patents can get granted at different points in time. So, you could file a patent in 2017, your competitor could file it just after a few days after you and you could preserve. So, you could have a priority before your competitor's priority because you were, you filed the complete specification before your competitor. Assume that your competitor files it after a week of you filing your application. 
but for some reason the competitor gets an earlier grant it's quite possible because there could be objections raised in your case and it could take you could take some time in replying to it for whatever reason the competitor got a grant before you just because your competitor got got a grant before you if his priority is not before yours his grant cannot be a reason to invalidate your patent this is what 118b tells us the grant of another patent which claims the invention so far as claimed in the first mentioned claim in a claim of the same or the latter priority date so as we mentioned grant of a patent cannot challenge the priority date of an earlier invention if the claim has the same priority date or a latter priority date now uh, constantly there are issues which come with regard to patents that are filed at the same time i mean most of them are hypothetical it's interesting to look at these dates and to pose questions as to when a claim gets its priority from if two inventors invent a invention without any cooperation between them parallelly they invent the same invention and they file a patent application on the same day so let's take both of them file their patent application on june 1st 2017 one of the inventors get a patent granted earlier in time now the patent that is granted earlier cannot be the reason for questioning the other person's invention because both their priorities are the same so they will be allowed to continue based on the language in section 118b because if the grant of the other patent which claims the invention so far as the claim in the first mentioned claim in a claim of the same or latter priority if the priority is latter obviously we know that it cannot be a ground for challenge but if even if the priority is same 118a tells us that it cannot be a ground for challenge so priority has to be prior in time so the same date again cannot be the ground for a challenge it, it will be a very rare case where two people having the same invention claiming it in the same language file it on the same day uh, as i said it, it only happens in hypothetical cases uh, but if that is to happen say that by some sweet coincidence two people cover the same invention and file it on the same day under 118b <coughs> both of them will survive one cannot challenge the other because it says the grant of the other patent in a claim of the same or later priority date will not affect it so if this is the same date it cannot affect the or it cannot be used to validate the other patent can a claim have two or more priority dates now there is a difference in approaches from various jurisdictions some jurisdictions have held that claims cannot have two or more priority dates for the simple fact that if it is completely disclosed at one point in time that is the only priority date other jurisdictions have held that claims could have different priority dates based on if the matter on which the claim is based on was disclosed repeatedly for instance if there is a mechanical device which is a a uh, combination of five existing devices say there is a camera there is a timer there is a touch screen there is a thermostat and there is a accelerometer just say that a mechanical device with these five things now if the description of this device came out in a provisional specification on jan 1st the first provisional was filed with all the five components on jan 1st on february 1st the same disclosure is mailed but now they also add a peripheral to it they add a say a mouse by which you can control this device it has a touch screen but you can also scroll it using a mouse so the mouse was added in the february disclosure now in both the disclosures you will find that the entire invention with the five components is described fully in the first one and in the second one in january you have first first disclosure it is again repeated in february 1st now because you have two disclosures you need to now know to which disclosure does claim 1 go assume that claim 1 covers all the five components without the peripheral without the mouse claim 2 covers the mouse now for claim 1 there is a choice 
of going by FEB 1 disclosure or by FEB 2 disclosure. There is a choice. Law says if there are two disclosures, we go to the earliest. The law says if there are two disclosures, because, the, the, it, it, because by the nature of covering inventions, you have to describe it you have to describe it in entirety. Sometimes there is repetition in provisionals. You will find that if provisionals are filed over the same inventive concept over a period of one year, say you find 10 provisionals, there will be repetition of the same concept. So, law makes it very clear that wherever the concept was first disclosed, that is where the priority starts from. 